ladies who come to visit our allotment site are usually given a quite a warm welcome. However, our last visitor, who goes by the name of Doris, I don't think she'll be getting an invite again. Come and see what she left behind. Looking at it, I got off quite lightly. It's just a bit of uh, covers blown away in the mother air. You can see they've blown around. But a quick look around the plot. Not everybody had been so fortunate. You can see here there's uh, bins and that blown over. Nothing too drastic. This, this looks to be the worst uh, victim of the storm. As you can see, it's devastated the greenhouse. Anyone who has a Poundland store nearby, I can recommend this bargain. Horticultural Vicmiculite, 5 litres, and you've guessed it right, a pound. I did take advantage of this offer, as you'll see probably in the accompanying picture. <laughs> horrible day it is out there after all them storms and winds we never got horrible rain it's quite icy and uh, not very pleasant out there anyway i'll just show you this to start with this is a little parcel i know it is it's from my friend nick over at nick's allotment and it's a, a box of snowdrops thanks nick for sending those uh, i know terry king's had one because i saw his upload this morning and uh, i'm not sure where i'm going to put them yet so what i'll do i'll get a big bucket and I'll put them in there as a temporary store and we'll sort something out a bit later on. If only the seed companies pack their stuff as good as this. There's a few good clumps in there and uh, I'm sure they'll come into flower very well next season when they've established. What well, I intend to put the snowdrops in say as a temporary measure is in the bucket and this here is a, a mixture of worm casts and uh, leaf mould, you can, you can see there's still the odd leaf in here but this is really lovely crumbly stuff and I'm sure they'll thrive in it. I'm not going to put any additional nutrients in or anything like that, I'll just leave it as it is and uh, let them tick over. Planted or roughly at the same depth as the, the soil that's holding the bulbs together. I'll just top them up with, with uh, what's left of the compost mix and then I'll put them out actually in the rain to let them bed in. And there they are, a lovely bunch of snowdrops, that is. Just noticed on the front I've still got the badge on for the Cherokee tomato. I'll just take that off and uh, rebadge it with the snowdrops. Another day and it's still freezing cold, although the rain has stopped now. Yesterday afternoon it came down in buckets and it started puddling outside so I decided to give up. Anyway, I'm back in the greenhouse now and I've got these uh, golden gourmet shallots to plant. I've got two bags. I usually start them off in these uh, cell trays and uh, once they get established I put them out into the ground. I always pickle the shallots and uh, I just love them, they're really nice. The compost in here is the, I had a little bit left over from yesterday, the uh, leaf mould and worm cast when I potted the snowdrops up. So I've just added a bit more extra of the wicks multi-purpose and uh, I think they'll be fine in this. Just a little tap to knock it in. That's 
more than good enough now. All the nose put the shallots in. Always check through the bags first and make sure there's none that's gone squidgy. You'll get one or two where they've got a bit of loose skin around the paper and stuff like that. Just, just peel that off and away, ready for planting they are. Just settle them in, no need to press hard. All I need to do is just rest on the soil and now find their own way around. It's worth mentioning at this point that the uh, be careful that this area doesn't get damaged. This is called the basal plate of the uh, bulb the set and uh, if that does get damaged it can affect the bulb growth. In fact you can stop it altogether. You might get a little tail on the end of the bulb like this. The thing you all I do is just snip that off and it's good to go into the uh, tray. It's a little depression there. Just place it in round and that's done. So there we have the row there. I managed to get uh, 41 out of the two packets. Well done, I'll leave them in this cold greenhouse on the allotment and I'll just pop a propagator lid over the couple of trays. It's amazing really, the last few days we've had the rain and cold but I've just looked at the garlic and I can't believe how fast it's growing. I'll just show you. This air was sown around about the beginning of uh, November and for a good while it showed no signs at all. But all of a sudden, as you can see, it's just shot up and these rows here on the end, these are uh, elephant garlic. I think there's three rows of elephant and the rest is just, uh, as we call, normal garlic. I'm going to sow some uh, sweet peppers and the variety is called bullhorn mixed. I've never actually grown these before. Uh, I'm reading on the packet, it's got beautifully long shiny red and yellow pointed fruits which average 25 centimetres, 10 inches in length and have a few seeds inside. Mm, sounds interesting. I'm probably going to grow about, well, yeah, I'm going to grow 12 in a, a seltzer. I'm going to grow them in Jiffy 7s. 12 might seem a lot, but on our site there, there's two or three of us who uh, have it edged together and we decide what we grow, and we tend then to swap plants rather than all growing the same, and uh, it works out quite good. So let's get started on this one. Those of you not familiar with these, these are called uh, Jiffy 7s, and dehydrated peat pellets, and when you add water they swell up into a nice little compact size, and ideal for taking cuttings and also planting small seeds. Taking a closer look, there is a top and bottom to these. If you look on the one on the right, the pair on the right, they've got a little depression in the top, and when the pellet swells, it actually leaves a little depression for the seed or plant to go in and uh, what I've done this is actually a 6x4 full size cell tray I've cut it in half these Jiffy 7s fit ideally in there and ideal for rehydrating before I add the water I just want to say a few words about this water can a few people have put comments on asking about it and it's it's actually my father's can it was and it's made by a company called Hawes this, this model is called the Long Tom it's fantastic long reach for getting borders and the thing I like about it, it's got a nice brass rose on the end and also it's very very fine. The Jiffy 7s are in the cell tray now and I've just put them into the bigger soaking tray. I'll add the water and we can watch them go to action.
as you can see the seed is quite flat and but you can easily pick one out and pop it into a cell so let's get going The seed safely in place, all that's left to do now is to pop a bit of the compost back down on the top. And what I tend to do is just put your little thumb out, bare finger over, pop it down, and that's it. Ready for the propagator. I'm just about to sow some uh, garlic chives now. This is a free packet I got from Marshalls when I ordered some uh, potatoes and uh, onion sets. I've never grown these before, the garlic variety. I think Mick Watson uh, had a packet as well, and he's already sown it. So I'm going to put these in and see how they go. The final sign for this upload will be me broad beans and as usual I'll be doing them in these 32 cell root trainers. I'm just filling them up now and uh, I'll be using this, the Wix compost. The one downfall I've found to this, it's no issue with the compost, is that uh, because the way it's packed it's very very compact in the bag and you need to break it up, it does come out in clumps but sticking the lump, so it's, it, that's come out in a lump like that. But by rubbing it through your hands it's actually very fine there's very very few lumps or bits of rubbish in it so uh, just a bit of extra time but it's well worth it anyway let's get these cells filled in and we can start planting Now normally my bean of choice is either the Sutton or Aquadulce Claudia but I thought I'd have a ch change and move away from tradition but still get the well known bean and this one's called Bunyard's Exhibition. There's varied opinions on how to place the beans regarding the sowing but I think in general as long as the beans are on the not lying flat the uh, so the water to congeal Finally, before we bring this one to a close, I thought I'd share this with you. My daughter brought it to my attention. Probably the most famous ketchup maker, in, definitely in the UK, but now it's worldwide, I think, is Heinz, Heinz Ketchup. And uh, I'll just show you something there that uh, Heinz, currently at the moment, you can apply to them for some tomato seeds, grow the tomatoes, send them back, and there's a chance then that you can have it made into your own ketchup with a customised bottle. Unfortunately, I think it's only for UK citizens, but I might actually give that a go. Anyway, that's about it for this one, and I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye for now.